So one of the things that uh, we've talked about a number of times is that the longer Trump is out of office, the more insane he gets and the more fringe he gets. So in 2016, he was actually um, pretty politically clever. Like, he managed to mix standard right-wing bigotry and xenophobia on social issues with uh, economic populism. He was certainly more economic, uh, economically populist than any of the other candidates. But then, the longer he was in office, the more he, like, sort of snuggled up to the outlets that liked him and shit on the ones that didn't. And so he became, like, sort of a standard Fox News grandpa. His 2020 campaign was indicative of that. Like, the fake populism was gone. He was just sort of angry all the time. Uh, and then now, since he lost 2020, he's been out of the White House... He's over in Mar-a-Lago, and he's, um, you know, he is mad at Fox News now a lot of the time. He's listening to Newsmax and One American News Network. He, he, you know, he met with fucking Kanye West and Nick Fuentes. Like, these are, it is insane. And, um, the, the people who are loyal to him are just the craziest people. Like, everybody who has any sense uh, sort of were, was a rat that fled the shit. And, but the people who remained are, like, some of the dumbest and weirdest people out there. Like, just politically maladjusted freaks who are conspiracy-minded and insane and agree with Trump when he says stuff like he did the other day. Terminate the Constitution! So anyway, uh, I say all that to show you this. QAnon conspiracy theorist Liz Crokin marvels at how she has gone from being ostracized for spreading Pizzagate conspiracy theories to being able to openly promote them at Mar-a-Lago. What? So she was at the home of the president spreading one of the most deranged conspiracy theories imaginable. Okay, let's listen. I got the privilege and the honor to speak at Mar-a-Lago about Pizzagate um, at the fundraiser, um, at the cocktail reception that we had outside by the pool um, before we went to the ballroom for dinner. And, you know, six years ago, you know, I, I was a lone soldier fighting this, no one wanted to even say the word Pizzagate because the media had so successfully um, redefined what it is and it was so taboo. And I can't even tell you how badly I was ostracized for talking about Pizzagate, exposing Pizzagate and how many friends I lost and what a lonely journey it was. So to go from, you know, um, that to being at mar a -Lago and being able to freely talk about Pizzagate there and say this is real and there's no more tiptoeing around it anymore was just an incredible experience i got the privilege that's fucking insane that's insane this is like if obama was hanging out with like a 9-11 truther who was like who like went to obama's house and was giving a speech about 9-11 truther shit that's what this is that's what this is the equivalent of okay let me give you some uh some more on this just so you understand what we're really talking about here Pizzagate Conspiracy Theory Pizzagate is a conspiracy theory that went viral during the 2016 United States presidential election cycle. It has been extensively discredited by a wide range of organizations, including the Washington, po the Washington D.C. police. So the police had to investigate this because there were a bunch of crimes at that, that pizza place. The, what was it called? Comet Ping Pong. Um, people had gone there and committed crimes because they heard of Pizzagate and they were afraid, oh my god, they got like kids tied up in the basement and stuff, bro. So they went there, they committed crimes. The cops obviously had to get involved, had to arrest people, then they had to investigate. And they walked away from this thing like, D yeah, this is just totally made up. Okay. In March 2016, the personal email account of John Podesta, Hillary Clinton's campaign chair, was hacked in a spear phishing attack. WikiLeaks published his emails in November 2016. Proponents of the Pizzagate conspiracy theory falsely claimed the emails contained coded messages that connected several high-ranking Democratic Party officials and U.S. restaurants with an alleged human trafficking and child sex ring. One of the establishments allegedly involved was the Comet Ping Pong Pizzeria in Washington, D.C. All right, let me pause here. Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. And you want to talk about a, a corporation that was effectively Elite Sex Crimes, Inc.? That was Jeffrey Epstein and what went on there. And he had Democrats and Republicans, high-level elites, who would come to his little fucking personal island, and there was all sorts of debauchery and crimes and pedophilia and all sorts of shit going on. That's real. That's real. But these people take something like this, and there's so much misinformation and lies around it, and they believe this. Which, by the way, also in turn sort of discredits the real shit, which is the Jeffrey Epstein stuff. All right. They say members of the alt-right, conservative journalists, and others who had urged Clinton's prosecution over her use of an 
unrelated private email server spread the conspiracy theory on social media outlets such as 4chan, 8chan, Reddit, and Twitter. In response, a man from North Carolina traveled to Comet Ping Pong to investigate the conspiracy and fired a rifle inside the restaurant to break the lock on a door to a storage room during his search. The restaurant owner and staff also received death threats from, from conspiracy theorists. Pizzagate is generally considered a predecessor to the QAnon conspiracy theory. It also generated another offshoot conspiracy theory called Frazzle Drip. I don't even know this one. Which involved Hillary Clinton participating in the ritual murder of a child. Nobody hates Hillary more than me, but this is obvious bullshit. The problem with Hillary is that she supported the Iraq War. The problem with Hillary is that she was cool with Wall Street deregulation. The problem with Hillary is what happened in Libya. The problem with Hillary is not fucking child sacrifice. Pizzagate resurged in 2020 mainly due to QAnon, while initially it was spread by only the far right. This is the scary part, guys. It had since been spread by teens on TikTok, quote, who otherwise, who don't otherwise fit a right-wing conspiracy theorist mold. The biggest Pizzagate spreaders on TikTok appeared appear to otherwise be mostly interested in topics of viral dance moves and Black Lives Matter. The conspiracy theory has developed and become less partisan and political in nature, with less emphasis on Clinton and more on the alleged worldwide elite of child sex traffickers. Yeah, so, look. This is why, like, you need media literacy, and you need to know how to, like, research and, and do a deep dive on a topic. Because, again, the fact of the matter is, the Jeffrey Epstein stuff was real. We know it's real. This stuff, the more you investigate the specific claims that are made, the more you realize... This is fucking bullshit. This is bullshit. Okay, so, of course, the restaurant owners were harassed, and there were death threats, and there were people who came there, and, one, you know, somebody went to Comet Ping Pong and, and was shooting a gun, and then there was uh, other scenarios where there were other restaurants that were apparently part of the conspiracy, and they also got death threats, and there were all these issues around it. Now, um, uh, let, me, let me share this part with you, too. She gave a speech about how Pizzagate was real at Mar-a-Lago, where the president lives, surrounded by him and his elites. Unbelievable. Listen to this. This is the debunking of the conspiracy. The conspiracy theory has been widely discredited and debunked. It has been judged to be false after detailed investigation by the fact-checking website Snopes and the New York Times. Numerous news organizations have debunked it as a conspiracy theory, including the New York Observer, the Washington Post, the Independent, the Huffington Post, the Washington Times, that's a conservative outlet. The Los Angeles Times, Fox News, CNN, and the Miami Herald. The Metropolitan Police Department of the District of Columbia characterized the matter as, quote, fictitious. Much of the purported evidence cited by the conspiracy theories proponents had been taken from entirely different sources and made to appear as if it supported the conspiracy. Images of children, of family, and friends of the pizzeria staff were taken from social media sites such as Instagram and claimed to be photos of victims. On December 10th, 2016, the New York Times published an article that analyzed the theory's claims. They emphasized that, number one, the theorists linked the conspiracy to Comet Ping Pong through similarities between company logos and symbols related to Satanism and pedophilia. However, the Times noted similarities were also found in the logos of a number of unrelated companies such as AOL, Time Warner, and MSN. Theorists claimed an underground network beneath Comet Ping Pong. The restaurant has no basement, however and the picture used to support this claim was taken in another facility. So in other words, some of the people steering the conspiracy are just fucking liars. Theorists claimed to have a picture of restaurant owner Elephantis wearing a t-shirt endorsing pedophilia. However, the image was of another person, wasn't even him, and the shirt, which read J. Hart Lefant, French for I Love the Child, was actually a reference to the Lefant Cafe Bar in D.C., whose owner was pictured in the image, and which itself is named after Pierre Charles Lefant, the designer of much of the layout of Washington, D.C. See, this is the thing. I mean, these people think not only is there a satanic pedophile ring, uh, but also the people who are involved in it and run it drop little hints so that everybody could, like, eventually figure out what they're doing. If they were doing that, why would they drop hints? They'd want to hide it by any means necessary. Like, look at Jeffrey Epstein. Like, they, him and Bill Clinton and Donald Trump and all the elite insiders, they were trying to hide it. They were trying to hide everything. There were no, like, oh, let's sprinkle little bits and pieces and breadcrumbs for people to follow. How fucking insane do you have to be to think that that's the case? Theorists claim John and Tony Podesta kidnapped Mad 
Madeline McCann used using police sketches that were, in fact, two sketches of the same suspect taken from the descriptions of two eyewitnesses. No alleged victims have come forward and no physical evidence has ever been found. Because it's bullshit. Okay. So this woman pushing, honestly, one of the dumbest fucking conspiracies that there is. Because look, keep it real. Some conspiracies are true. Martin Luther King is dead. Malcolm X is dead. JFK is dead. COINTELPRO is real. Operation Northwoods is real. There's a lot of real conspiracies. Every, everybody knows that. Bay of Pigs, everybody knows that shit. But some are bullshit. She's pushing one of the dumbest ones with the least amount of evidence, and she's doing it to Trump. At Mar-a-Lago. To him and his allies and his buddies. This is who he's surrounded by now. And you wonder why every day now he's retweeting fucking QAnon shit or retruthing QAnon shit. It's because of this. Every day he slips further and further away from reality. That's clear. If you want to see me and Crystal Ball interview legends like Noam Chomsky, Cornell West, and more, subscribe to Crystal Kyle and Friends on Substack. $5 a month gets you the video version a day early. Remember, we take zero ad dollars for this podcast. Or you can sign up on Substack for free and get the audio version a day later. Link in the video description box below.